This is the fifth and the last of the videos in this series, the DC motor, the armature reaction. So far we have said that the MMF creating the magnetic clocks in the air gap of the DC machine is a combination of the MMF of the field coil NFIF and the series coil MMF NSIS, plus or minus depending on whether you have additive or subtractive composition. But in reality there is another current in the machine whose MMF we have been ignoring. What current is that? The armature current. You see that current is trying to increase the flux on the right and trying to decrease the flux on the left. It's applying more MMF on the right side and less MMF on this side. What is the net effect? One will think that the net effect is zero out of symmetry and that the flux would not change in the air gap. But that is wrong. Why? Because the characteristic of magnetization of the iron is non-linear. Assume uh, that the field coil and the series coil have the circuit operating at that point. That is a K5, that is a flux. And, but as soon as we have currents in the armature, the MMF in the air gap will increase by this much on the right hand side and the flux will increase by that much. And on the left hand side, the MMF will be decreased by exactly the same amount, which decreases the flux by a larger amount from what it was increased on the right hand side. The net effect is that the current in the armature will reduce the net flux in the air gap. It is as if we had a negative term added to the total MMF applied to the air gap. The effect of the current in the armature is included as a negative magnetomotive force proportional to the current in the armature. And we say that the net MMF applied to the air gap now is NFIF from the field coil plus NSIS from the series coil minus the armature reaction, a value proportional to the current in the armature. What is the equivalent field current with armature reaction? It is a combination of the field coil current, the series coil current, and the armature current. The equivalent field current IF asterisk that we used to enter in the curve would produce the same effect, the same flux, is this one. We sum the MMF and divide that by the number of turns in the field coil. That is going in the horizontal axis of the magnetization characteristic. In short, when we have the field coil current, the series coil current, and the armature current, we compute the equivalent IF star as above, and then we go to the curve. This curve, the curve for coffee. Let's visualize what is the effect of the armature reaction in the field. The net effect of the armature reaction is to warp the field flux in such a way that what used to be the equator of the magnetic field that is on the vertical line will be shifted to the right. But we had set the brushes to be where we expected the voltage in the coils would be zero, that be on the equator, and that is no longer zero. The net result is that now the brushes will be short-circuiting coils with a non-zero voltage. And then we observe that sparkling between the brushes and the commutator that is destructive both for the brushes and for the commutator. Let's see a way of compensating for this effect. The MMF applied by the armature current represented in green when the current is coming towards and in red when the current is going away is given by the right hand rule. The MMF applied by the armature uh, current is like this at 90 degrees with the flux and we know it's going to warp the flux and reduce its net value. What if we install on the faces of the poles that's indicated another winding, a compensating winding. We carve slots lengthwise and in there we install conductors that will carry the same current as the armature and that will apply an MMF on the circuit that will balance the one applied by the armature current. 
That way, we leave the creation of the flocks to the field coil and to the series coil exclusively, as it should be. Another way of correcting the effect of the armature reaction would be installing an additional pair of poles, called interpoles, between the main ones, north, south, on the left and the right. In those windings, we put a current that is proportional to the armature current in such a way that its MMF will cancel out the MMF created by the armature currents. In this picture, we see the compensation windings in white installed lengthwise along the machine. This machine is an expensive one. Compensation windings are not cheap. We can also observe the interpoles, and down here, and up there, the field coils. How does compensation windings change what we need to worry about in examinations? If there is a compensation winding, there is no armature reaction to account for. That's a blessing. But when there is no compensation winding, when the current in the armature increases, the flux decreases in the air gap, and with less flux we have more velocity. As the armature current grows, and the velocity of the machine grows as well. Do watch this. Before continuing, I invite you to go to the YouTube channel LearnEngineering.org and watch this awesome simulation of the DC motor. All that we have seen in this series will click in place in your minds and you will be ready for the new medical tutorial time right after this. Go there, I'll be waiting for you. Show your back. Tutorial time. An exercise taken from the Sense textbook. We're given a DC shunt motor with those uh, rated values. The armature has a resistance of 0 0.1 ohms. The motor is powered from a DC power supply of 115 volts. We're told that it's idling. What does it mean? It means that it has no mechanical load attached to it. And in numbers, it means that P out is 0 watts. Aha. Uh -huh. The armature current is measured and it's 5.5 amperes. The speed of the motor is measured and it's 1000 RPM. The question is, what is the total value of resistance in the field circuit? Adjustable resistor plus the value of the resistance of the field coil. Hmm. We need the magnetization characteristic, right? Yes, this one. A linear table. Let's begin. The circuit will be that of a shunt motor. What do we know? We know the voltage of the external source, 115 volts DC. We know the current in the armature, 5.5 amperes. We know the resistance of the armature, 0 0.1 ohms. And what else? We know that E, A is K, 5, omega. That's all. Well, we also know omega because we know the RPMs of the machine, 1000. We can convert that to radians per second. Oh, we know a lot of things, but what we are trying to compute is this resistance. If only we knew this current IF, the field current, then we would use Ohm's law 115 divided by IF. But there is a way, because we know K phi, and there is a curve that relates K phi to the current IF. Do we know K phi? Of course we do. We have ET. We have the current in the armature, RA, we can compute EA, and with omega, we can compute K phi. And from the curve, find what is occurring in the field, and use Ohm's law to compute the resistance in the field circuit. Let's begin. In the calculator, let me define VT, RA, and IA with the values given to us. Next, we compute EA. It is the voltage of the source minus a drop in the resistance of the armature. 114 and a half volts. We go with that value to the table and interpolate. You say, oops, that value is outside of the range. So we extrapolate using the two values the closest to the one we're looking for, 108 and 109. How? We use the lip interpolation program and enter, enter the value for x, and that would be EA, the one we computed. 
and then we enter 108, 109, 1.3, 1.4, interpolate, and that is the value of IF, 2.16 amperes. We assign that to the variable I field. The value of the total resistance in the field circuit is VT divided by I field, Ohm's law, that is 53 ohms. And that is the answer to that question. More questions? Sure. Find the rotational losses. We'll remember that the converted power EIA is the sum of the rotational losses plus the output power. But in idling, P out is zero, that means that EIA will be only the rotational losses. We multiply AIA, and that is the value we're looking for. P rot is the AIA. We have both values, that is. 629 watts. Those are the rotational losses. Moving on. Now the motor is fully loaded and we're asked to compute what is the speed, what is the torque, and the efficiency. And we're blessed with a comment neglect armature reaction. We do not know the value of EA or IA, but we know the total power. Oh, what is that 12 multiplied by 746? That is the output power. 746 exactly, exactly, because that is a convention of the manufacturers of electric motors in North America. One horsepower, exactly 746. And the other equation, because we have two unknowns, EA and IA, the other equation would be the loop equation of the armature circuit. VT is EA plus the drop in the resistance of the armature. Two equations, two unknowns. We solve for IA in the second one, substitute in the first one, and then we have an equation in EA that we can solve. In my case, I'm going to use a calculator. First equation is EAX. A, you say, who is EAX? Well, EA and IA are variables I've already computed, so I'm giving them new names. These are the new values of those. That is equal to, there you go, boom. And the second equation is the loop equation of the armature circuit. Now we use the F solver, the floating point solver, for the system of equations and find the values. And those are the values. I put that in the list variable L1 and extract what is EAX, the first one. 106 volts. The velocity of the motor will be given, of course, the machine is rotating at a thousand. RPM as the curve, the proportionality gives me directly what are the RPMs of the machine, 926 revolutions per minute. That is the speed of the motor at full load. Now, what is the torque? Omega in radians per second would be given as the RPM that I computed above multiplied by 2 pi divided by 60. 97 radians per second and the torque is the output power divided by that velocity 12 horsepower multiplied by 746 watts per horsepower a convention divided by omega that is the torque 92 newton meters what else the efficiency what is the input power the input power is the voltage of the power supply multiplied by the total current iax plus i field I feel hasn't changed. And finally, we compute the efficiency, that is the output power, divided by the input power, and multiply by 184%. And that is that. Finally, they ask us, hey, wait a second, what if there is an armature reaction at full load and it is equivalent to a field current of 0.12 amperes? Recompute everything. I'll do the first part, I'll leave the second part for you guys. The new value of the field current will be what I had before, minus 0.12, correct? And then with that value, when we go to the table, and from the table we compute what is the new value of EA, the induced voltage in the armature, 114 volts. From there, we deduce that the new RPMs are 1,073 revolutions per minute. You see, the machine is running faster. Now that it's loaded, than when it was idling. Why? Because there is armature reaction. The flux has decreased and the velocity has gone up. And that is all, my friends. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you all in our next video.